back guys if you watch this show regularly you know that we basically don't have daily weather segments we are admittedly weird but we still love when you send us weather related questions jennifer wrote matt used what he called the european model during the weather report can someone explain that to us basically what that is so i think someone can explain it to you actually let's bring in chief meteorologist matt zafino himself to tell us what in the world are you talking about right <laughs> it's a good question and no this isn't somebody you see on a plane say from milan to paris we're not talking about europe you are bougie like that but yeah that's good talk about being snooty you don't even have weather in your show every day that's wow <laughs> <laughs> yikes wow <laughs> yeah all right so here's the deal let me it's it's model mania and i'm starting with one model here but i can give you an example of, of what we're talking about here. Basically, in weather forecasting, there are several different models. Those are, that's the computer guidance that gives us weather maps out in the future that helps us forecast the weather. And we show these to you on the air. The European model doesn't refer to a model that's only over Europe. It's a model that's run by, and this is a long one, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting, otherwise known in the business as the ECMWF, or as we call it commonly, the Euro model. So it is a model run by the organization that forecasts weather for all of the European countries there. And the reason we use this, and it's used all around the world, is because it's a really good model. In fact, sometimes it's better than the American model. So here's an example of the differences. This is a, a weather pattern in the upper level parts of the atmosphere. I show you this on the air for next Thursday, right? And just, just picture this in your mind here. See how we're getting this kind of a rise in the bands here, and then it drops down there, and then cooler colors here. Well, that was the European model. If I switch to the American model, known as the GFS, at the same time, it looks a little bit different. It just gives you a different answer sometimes. And the reason for that is they have different physics in them. They can have different cutoff times as to when they stop receiving the data that gives them the initial condition. So in order to forecast the weather out in time, you need to know what it is from a starting point, that's what the initial conditions are. So if you allow more data to come into your computer model, meaning you just don't start running the computer until a little bit later, you should theoretically have a better model because it has a better understanding of how things are initially. Here's another example. This is for uh, Wednesday night, and I'm gonna run this out until we go to tomorrow, uh, overnight, Thursday at 2.30 in the morning. And you see there's heavy rain over the Portland area right here. Again, this is one model, that is, the, that is a local model, and that's an American model. This is the European model, valid at the same time, it just shows rain everywhere a lot lighter. So you can see the differences between the two models. So that's why we reference the European model, or the graph model, or the RPM model, or the, NAM. There's lots of different models. I can think of about eight off the top of my head, and there are more than that. Sum it up for you this way. We use several different models for forecasting the weather because they each give us a slightly different answer. And here's the thing. If they all converge on one answer, it gives us a lot more confidence that the models know what they're doing and they know what they're talking about, and that leads to a better forecast. Uh, they, are, they vary in how they are initialized, how they start. They can have different resolutions. Some are really good at looking at Oh, the terrain. Some don't even have terrain. That's kind of an older thing. They have different domains, meaning some are global, some are just over a limited area, and they have different physics in them as well. So there's lots of differences. We also use ensemble forecasting. Basically, ensemble modeling is this. It's the same model. It's just tweaked with a lot of slightly different conditions to see how it, how it behaves according to that. And again, if they all converge on the same solution, it gives us more confidence that the models know what they're doing. So that's what, you're, that's what we're doing. The European model explained, hopefully. Maggie. Matt, I thought it was fancy and I loved it. Thank you so much. That was super interesting. Guys, we're going to finish the story right after this.